Next one we want to talk about is chiefdoms. And chiefdoms are usually intensive agriculturalists. It's a political grouping of permanently allied tribes and villages under one leader. It's transitional between tribes and states. We have never documented a group going from tribe right to state. They always pass through this chiefdom um, model, unless, of course, they've been forced to adopt the state model through the process of colonization. These are large populations. We usually have one place that is the centralized power base. Uh, they're socially complex societies. So all members of a chiefdom are believed to have descended from a group of common ancestors. Status is based on seniority of descent. So the closer to the founding ancestors, the greater social prestige. Uh, they have ascribed status. So they are born into it, but they are expected to have the skills to run the office. Chiefs usually have more wealth than anyone else, but they do regulate production and redistribution. So they might keep more for themselves, but they do make sure that other people get the resources they need also. Chiefs collect tribute, and normally the goods are redistributed in the forms of a feast. Uh, the chief is responsible for solving internal conflict. He is also responsible to plan and lead wars. If a chief dies in office, it's got to be filled. Um, so the office itself exists independently of the individual who holds it, kind of like the President of the United States. That office exists independently of the person that holds it. So if a president dies, the office doesn't go away. Some examples are the Ashanti of West Africa, the Edo of Nigeria, the Iroquois of the U.S., and the pre-contact Polynesians. That brings us up to state level societies. Again, intensive agriculturalists. We have a very centralized power political unit that encompasses many communities, and the state possesses coercive power. So the people here have the power to force people to do what they want them to do. States first emerged around 6000 BP or before present in Mesopotamia. So the Sumerian city states are some of our earliest examples. Now, if the archaeological evidence holds that's currently coming out of Mesopotamia, that date might be pushed back a little bit. Now, states have power over their domain. They define citizenship and they define the citizens' rights and responsibilities. And generally speaking, not everybody has the same rights and responsibilities. They monopol or they, as the state, monopolizes the use of force and they maintain law and order. So laws, courts, police, uh, they maintain standing armies and police. They keep track of citizens in terms of number, age, gender, location, and wealth through census systems. Uh, they have the power to extract resources from citizens, primarily through taxes. Um, it can also be in kind. The Inca actually used something called the Mita system, which was more of a, a labor, uh, labor tax. Uh, and the state also manipulates information. Now, since states can be pretty big, they do um, try to regulate the population. Uh, this is usually where we see a bureaucracy emerge. They have administrative divisions, excuse me. <coughs> so this might be, like we have the United States as a nation, but then we have the states, then we have counties, and then we have um, uh, city kinds of uh, administrative divisions, um, even down to townships. So we do see a rather extensive bureaucracy. Um, but what this does happen to do is foster geographic mobility and resettlement. The state actually promotes that because it was one of the ways that they broke kin relationships. So that strength of the family kind of goes away a little bit. States often use religious beliefs and symbols to maintain their power. Uh, early state leaders often claim to be deities. Uh, regalia is often a part of that. Uh, they may conscript ideology for political purposes, and this is something that states still do today. Um, the ancient Maya are a good example of this. Their early or their rulers claimed to be deities. They were the only conduit to the gods. They often dressed quite elaborately. They used their ideology to maintain their position. So many of the Mayan buildings we see what's called the Triadic Pyramid Complex where you have three pyramids sitting on top of a big temple platform or pyramidal base and 
two small pyramids face one another, and those represent the hero twins in Mayan uh, cosmology, mythology. And then there's a bigger pyramid that faces the big square where the people would have been gathered, and that was the ruler's pyramid. So he's setting himself smack down in the middle of this mythology that's basically how the Maya came to be. One way to try to get people to follow them, because people had to convince others to follow them. Uh, most states are hierarchical and patriarchical. So that means there's going to be social ranking, social status, and generally speaking, descent is reckoned through the father's line. There are no states that are female dominated. We have had some female leaders like Indira Gandhi, Golda Meir, Margaret Thatcher, and Benazir Bhutto, but still no state that's been female dominated. Again, this is really, really short introduction to political organization. If you want to learn more about states, then definitely take one of the political science classes on campus. But it's okay to move on to the next lecture.